given. While you're coming, we do want to make an announcement that the youth is having a fireworks stand. It's in uh, Springfield, and it's for the youth going to NAYC. Uh, they worked yesterday. Uh, we've had people to ask the youth to work. And I'm so proud of our young people, those of the wind that worked and made the money. Hallelujah. And it's money. Hallelujah. So I'm proud of them. And so if you're going to buy any fireworks, come to Springfield and get some fireworks. Hallelujah. And support the youth. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Elder Rowan, would you ask the Lord for us? Lord, we're so blessed. Thank you for another day, Lord. Thank you for
coming in about 11.30, and then we'll have another good time of worship and the Word of the Lord, so we don't want to leave. And I would remind you that throughout the month of July, uh, we will be only having the morning services, and so that will be through July, uh, but don't get in the habit. Amen. That's right. I didn't sound too excited about that. <laughs> the Lord tells me to do otherwise. Amen. Amen. I just hadn't heard anything from him on that. <laughs> well, praise God. Praise I love being in church. How about you? to take you back to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. I started this lesson a couple of Sundays ago and I was not able to finish it. And so I'd like to complete the lesson today from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. And we talked about the purpose of life. You're not here just because there's no other place, or better place for you to be right now. There's purpose. Amen. You have purpose in your life, and it's so important that we find that purpose. Amen. There are a lot of miserable, miserable people in our world today. Amen. And I think it's because they've not found their purpose Amen. in life. So it's so important that we understand God's purpose Amen. for our lives. So the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. I charge thee therefore before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick of the dead, Amen. and his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. But that's the sad part about it. As they turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Talk to us. Give us fables. Don't don't uh, teach and preach the truth that sometimes hurts, digs us up, turns over things, and reveals things, just, just fables, that's all we want to hear. Now folks, we are living in that day, uh, whether you recognize it or not, we are living in that hour that Paul told Timothy would come. That in that day they would not endure sound doctrine, having itching ears, they will have teachers having itching ears, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, but I say watch, watch. you've got to be alert in this hour, watch thou in all things, endure affliction. They're going to come. But you can endure them. Amen. Do the work of an evangelist. Everybody needs to be involved in evangelism. Amen. Reaching out to the lost. Amen. Bringing people to God. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. What a testimony now he gives. And this I pray will be my testimony one day. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his period. Then Luke chapter 12, and verse number 15, he said unto them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Amen. Amen. A 
lot of folks have thought, if I could just have this, and if I can obtain that, then life will be heaven on earth. Soon to find out it's really not that way. Because usually the more people get, the more they want. The more it takes to satisfy. If you don't get your act again, there's nothing wrong with having nice things and a lot of good things. I'm not preaching against any of that. But you've got to remember your purpose in life and you've got to keep your focus and you've got to keep your priorities right. Or it won't matter how much you obtain as far as this world's goods are concerned. Your life is not going to be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk or continue to talk today about purpose in life. Lord, we thank you for this day and your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for each and every one that's here today. I pray that uh, you will anoint us all. Lord, be to minister your word. Anoint this congregation to receive your word. Yes. To respond to it in a very positive way. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Clap yes. your hands and magnify the Lord. a whole lot because I'll just wind up not finishing again today. Uh, so, but let me just mention that God has given us the gift of life. Amen. Life is a gift from God and it is a wonderful experience. Amen. In Jesus Christ we learn to appreciate life's challenge, life's purpose, and life's potential. Um, we talk first of all about life is wonderful, so live it. Um, Genesis 2 and 7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathing his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And then, of course, we talked about the mystery of life. The psalmist said, What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visited him? I mean, have you know that you're valuable to him? Valuable to God. So we talked about the mystery of life. We talked about the abundant life in Christ. It's not just life, it's abundant life. And he said that he would give us that abundant life. Nothing can compare to life in Christ Jesus. I wouldn't trade this life for any other life in this world. I, I know there's a lot of people as far as this world's uh, goods are concerned. They have a whole lot more than I have, but I wouldn't trade my life living for the Lord for I would trade place with the richest man in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As, as you know that we have seen recently uh, people that were popular, well known, very wealthy people who have committed suicide and a shock to people. I mean that's the world we're living in. And I, I mentioned that I'd heard on talk radio, Sean Hennedy had mentioned that he knew a lot of very wealthy people who were not happy. And that's that's the way it is. But I, I've known some folks that hardly had enough, uh, didn't have two dimes to rub together. But some of the happiest people you'll ever meet in your life. Because they found purpose. They found their purpose in life. And they realized that living for God is, is a great life. It's abundant life. We talked about the wonder of life uh, through uh, the years and what God has done for us. Uh, then we talk secondly that life is tough. Amen. Life is tough. Amen. And so you have to learn to endure it. Uh, adverse situations will arise. In fact, uh, if there is a certainty in life, it is that life is uncertain. Amen. And uh, so we're going to have afflictions. Things are going to happen, but I, I'm glad for what Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And then he also writes in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Everybody say, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be 
be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Come on, folks. You can make it if you want to. You can put your mind to it. If you're hiding it, you can make it through any and every situation. We talked about coping with the problems. Um, you have to learn to just cope with some things. Uh, for 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, Paul said we are troubled on every side, but I like this, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. And so we're going to have trouble, but you don't have to get stressed out about it. And uh, you're going to be, you're going to feel perplexed every once in a while, you're going to feel perplexed, but you don't have to despair. Everybody say, God's on my side. God will bring me through. Praise God. Praise God. And so God has given us everything that we need to make it in this hour. And so that brings us up to where we stopped a couple of weeks ago. So let's continue from here. Now, any person who has lived for the Lord uh, for any period of time has experienced times when he found it difficult to understand why the road of life led through pain, through suffering, and through disappointment. Amen. All of us have faced those times and Amen. we've uh, wondered why these things are happening. Why am I having to go this way and travel this road? Right. Uh, he may find it hard to grasp the reason that God has allowed him to endure a fiery trial. But when he turns to God, he discovers that God's presence in his heart will not allow him to sink into despair. Amen. God's Spirit will help and raise us up in the midst of those difficult situations. And so we may be confused and perplexed about these problems, but the Holy Ghost will provide God's direction and God's insight and lead us faithfully through every valley experience. I've never gone through a valley that God didn't walk through that valley with me and bring me out of that valley to the next man of time. I mean, we can honestly say God has never failed you. God has never let you down. God has never forsaken you. That's the God that you and I serve. Now, a Christian may say sometimes, why? That's just normal. That's our Adamic nature sometimes to ask the question, why? But, the Christian never gives up or loses his blessed hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may ask why, but you don't have to lose your hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. The majority of Paul's converts and the churches that Paul shepherd uh, lived under the constant threat of imprisonment and even death. And so to trust in God's protection day by day was not just a phrase and a testimony to them. It was a way of life. Amen. We're blessed today. We, we have not, we, we're not going through uh, every day like these did in, back in the days of the apostles where uh, I mean every day they were threatened by imprisonment and, and even death. It, it was not just a testimony to them. It was simply a way of life. They simply trust in God. They trusted in God. It wasn't just a good testimony that uh, they could stand and testify about. I just trust in the Lord today. No, they proved it. It was a way of life. Every day they proved their trust was in the Lord. And so today in North America, physical persecution is the exception rather than the rule. Personal insults or ridiculing words may be spoken, but rarely does persecution take the form of physical abuse or injury. And I'm thankful for that. But here's where our great battle is. Ephesians 6 and 12. Paul said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Nevertheless, the church and individual believers face these powerful forces of spiritual persecution. It is a battlefield, brother. We're not in a, on a playground today. We're in a battle, and we are fighting against 
the enemy of our soul. But aren't you glad to know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? So the battle against evil is fought in the spiritual realm. And the battle is fierce and the battle is real. It is a battle in the mind. It is a battle in the heart and in the spirit, but we are not required to battle alone. Look at your neighbor and tell them, you're a child of God. You're not in this battle by yourself. Let them know that the hand of the Lord is protecting us and overshadowing the fight with His power and His majesty. That Christ in us, the hope of glory, it is the hope of glory, and we battle together with Him against every foe. Amen. We have both the comfort of His presence and the power of His limitless might. Do we really understand that today? That the hand of the Lord is protecting us. Amen. And that we have both the comfort of His presence. He is with us. He is with us. Amen. Just as he was, the Bible says of Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. There is a comfort in knowing the Lord is with us. Amen. How do you know he's with us? Because he's in us. Amen. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. When we leave this building today, we don't leave God here. Amen. We don't leave him behind the veil. No, sir. I'm glad that after Pentecost, we take him with us wherever we go. His spirit in the world, us. His spirit is in us. So to know that we have his presence, what a comfort it is. And not only that, but to know that the power of his limitless, everybody say limitless, limitless. might is with us. Nothing is impossible with us. I'm telling you, the church will not fail or fall. Amen. God is fighting our battles, and He has never been defeated. He's never been defeated. And that's who's fighting our battle. I know the devil can, he does, he magnifies things, and, and he wants you to, to fear. In fact, that's one of the greatest weapons that Satan has. To use against us is fear. But God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love and of power and of a sound mind. When you have a sound mind, you know who's fighting the battle for you. You're not in this thing by yourself. Somebody shout it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Praise God. Praise God. He has never been See, without God's help, a person would have to rely on his own abilities and intellect. But even the most talented and wisest person cannot overcome the sinfulness of his own, fall, his own fallen nature. Alone we are no match against our carnality or the wiles of the devil. But with God on our side. With God on our side. We are a most formidable spiritual force that Satan cannot destroy. For the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the How many of you are glad you are part of the church? That's what the church is made of. It's Holy Ghost in Jesus' name that time. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. Jesus revealed his power of eternal life when he answered the Jews who desired sign of his claims. And Jesus said to them in John 2 and 19, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Amen. So they didn't understand his word, but the disciples later understood that he was talking about his resurrection, destroy this temple, this this body, but in three days I'll raise it up. And so we may at times appear to be defeated in our spiritual battle, but the Lord will give us the victory. Amen. 
We never need to fear being forsaken or destroyed as long as the Spirit of God resides in our lives. And so through the Spirit, every child of God has power over troubles, over trials, over traumas, over tribulations. You've got power over that through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then the third thing that I want to talk to you and the last one is that life is purposeful. It's purposeful. Amen. So find it. Look at your neighbor and say, find it. You see, God has a purpose for everybody in this room. Amen. God has a purpose for you. Along with his protection and power, God has placed a special calling upon every Christian. And when I say a calling, that does not mean a call to get behind the pulpit and preach. Some folks have jumped the gun, thought that's what God was calling them to do. And all the time, God was calling them to be soul winners and prayer warriors and worshipers and supporters of the church. And Amen. Hallelujah. But to God's calling is upon every Christian. God has a purpose for your life. And so throughout his teaching, Jesus communicated a common thread of purpose for both the individual and the church. And so he intends for each life to reflect the message of Jesus Christ in its own unique way. Everybody is unique in your own way. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell him you're unique. <laughs> we are empowered by his spirit to be witnesses of him, to reveal to others the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is the will of God for every Christian to be a witness. To share the good news of the gospel everywhere we go. To be a shining light in this dark world. And so to witness means more than preaching a sermon or teaching a class. It also involves a daily walk in holiness and devotion to Jesus Christ. People need to see Jesus in us. And so since God has appointed us to be witnesses in his kingdom, each of us must seek and find God's will for our lives individually. And so clearly discovering and following the will of God really can be challenging. It can be demanding. And it can de be demanding of our devotion and our dedication, discovering and following the will of God. Anybody here interested in the will of God for your life? Amen. I want to be found in the center of God's perfect divine will. So as we pray, we must be sensitive to the God's Spirit. For we are to be led by the Spirit. Uh, at times, God may speak to us in a quiet manner in our spirit. At other times, He may reveal a task for us through dreams and visions or prophetic utterances, or he may give us insight through the preaching of the Word, or through reading the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, we will know the voice of God, and his voice is always in harmony with his Word. I've heard some folks say, thus saith the Lord, and I knew it wasn't from the Lord, because it wasn't in harmony with the written Word of God. God's not going to tell you something that's not in harmony with the written Word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not, not everyone is called to be an evangelist. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. But everyone is called to be an instrument in fulfilling God's purpose. And so each person will discover how he or she can be used of God. And this is how you find it. Through dedicated prayer, through consecration, and an ear tuned to His Spirit. That's how you find the will of God for your life. We've got to seek our place. Everybody's got a place. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. One of the most uncomfortable and disturbing feelings <clears throat> is the sense of being out of place. Amen. Anybody ever experienced that? Amen. Man, I feel so out of place. That, that's a horrible feeling. <clears throat> Of course, the old saying is there's, there's no place like home. In fact, I wrote a song entitled that. There's just no place like home. It reflects our desire 
to be accepted, to be loved and appreciated in a family setting. Uh, we experience a comforting peace in our heart and spirit when we are in the place of right relationship with others. And so finding our place in God's kingdom brings unsurpassed joy and peace. We sense peace with God and we experience harmony with the church. There's nothing like finding your place in the kingdom of God. You talk about a life fulfilled when you find that place. God has for you in His kingdom. Such joy and peace comes with that. David that said in Psalm 63 and 1, O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. Of course, the word early in this verse could mean both early in life and, or it could mean early each day. Uh, we can find God's will in our youth, but we also need to seek Him for daily guidance. Amen. Daily guidance. Yes. Lord, I want to know Your will for today. Matthew 7 and 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And so the Lord promises the seeker that He will find, but He does not always indicate the specific time in which the answer will be found. However, God offers daily the guidance we need to do His will, along with the courage and the faith to accomplish it. If you'll seek, you'll find. Everybody say seek, and you shall find. God has a place for you. You've got to seek for that place. And God will reveal it to you. Then we've got to be busy fulfilling our purpose. When God's purpose and plan are revealed to us, we need to accomplish our calling to the best of our ability. Often the call of God requires preparation and it requires training, which a lot of folks aren't willing to take the time to go through. But it is a must. A person may need to be patient for God to open doors for him to fulfill his calling. But he must not become frustrated with God's timing. A man's gift and calling will make room for him. And others will come to see God's hand upon his life. That's what Proverbs 16, or rather 18 and 16 teaches us. So don't get in a hurry. Don't become impatient. Your gift will make room for itself. I've seen people who have fallen flat on their face. And I've seen and know of people who are not even living for God today because they simply jumped the gun, so to speak. They tried to push their way and force their way. It's so much better when you let God lead the way. Let God open the door. Let and He gets the glory for it all then anyway. Because it's all about Him. It's not about me. It's all about Him. I mean, shout it out. Writing to the Corinthian church, Paul explained that every person has his proper gift from God. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and 7. So when God opens a door of opportunity, we may walk through it with boldness and confidence in the Lord, and we may accomplish the task the Lord has given to us if God opens the door. Amen. And so we should not be negligent in fulfilling the purpose of God for our life. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4 verse 14 and 16 he says neglect not the gift that is in thee. Amen. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Amen. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. See God does not want us to be reluctant to obey his will for our life. For he desires us to joyfully proclaim him and his salvation. Amen. Amen. You see, life is far too short to risk not fulfilling God's perfect will in our life. Life is just too short. Amen. We've got to fulfill his will for our lives. He, he has a plan for each of us. He has a place his he has placed His Spirit in us and He fully expects us to accomplish the spiritual labor and exploits that He has entrusted to us. God wants to use every one of us to build the kingdom. We're in this thing together. No man is an island to himself. We're all in this thing together. God uses us. God gives gifts to different people and, and uh, God uses you. Don't 
try to grab everybody else's gifts. Just use the one God's given you to the best of your ability. Hallelujah. And I'm not just talking about the gifts of the Spirit right now as far as tongues, interpretation, tongues, things of that nature. There's, there's more gifts than just those gifts. The gifts of health. So wherever God places you, let God use you in those areas. You see, life, life holds joy and happiness for a child of God. For God gives abundant life to those who live for Him. Amen. And life remains abundant even in times of adverse situations and difficult moments. We experience that abundant life. In fact, we can meet every challenge of life with a bold, unrestrained faith in God. Life provides the opportunity for physical and spiritual growth. But regardless of our physical stature or personal reputation, what we accomplish for God and His cause will far outweigh any other human achievement. With Jesus Christ as an integral part of life, life becomes more than simply living. It is a great adventure in the Holy Ghost where believers seek His will and find His will and fulfill the will of God. Amen. So how, how could we give less than our best to the Savior who has given so much to the world? The Bible said to whom much is given, much is going to be required. God has given each of us life and a purpose for that life. It's the will of God for you to fulfill that purpose in your life. Although many will refuse to know Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit or to understand His will for their life, those who do believe in and obey Him rejoice in His salvation. It changes their lives. It puts a song in their heart. It gives them a godly purpose. It challenges their lives. I mean, I'd be glad there's a challenge going for us. God has a purpose for you. Find that place in the kingdom of God and let God use you. You see, Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So we can experience our potential in life as His Spirit guides us each day. How many of you here today really you really want to fulfill God's purpose for your life. If, that, if that's your desire, could you just stand with me right now and lift both hands in the air and say, Lord, I want that purpose to be fulfilled. I want your will to be done in my life. Help me, Lord, to know your will. Would you just talk to him about that right now? Would you just talk to him about that purpose he has for your life? Lord, I pray that you will help us right now. In Jesus' name, you see every heart, every individual here. Oh, God, each and every one is so important. Every member of the body is important. Everybody here today has their place. I pray that you will help us to find that place, Lord, and give it our best. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. It may not be where we want to be or what we want to do, but Lord, we want your will to be done. Help us, I pray, to bring this old flesh under subjection and say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Whatever my hands find to do, I'm going to do it with all of my might. Wherever you place me, Lord, whatever ministry you give me, I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Help us today, Lord. Help us today. Throughout this congregation, there are people with talent and ability, Lord, that you have bestowed upon them and given them that's lying dormant today. I pray in Jesus' name for a spirit of conviction to get a hold of hearts today. We can surrender our hearts and minds to you that your perfect divine will and purpose and plan can be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' To worship you, I live. In Jesus'
take just about a five minute break here and then we'll come right back in here ready to worship the Lord some more. Amen. Shake hands with somebody around you. I'm so glad you're in church with me today. Thank <laughs> you. 